Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Talk PMA. I want to talk today about how our energy affects the people around us. Um, yesterday, I met with one of the, or I was just talking to one of the girls on the CBC golf team, and she was saying how the last tournament she played with a girl that was um, angry and just not doing things right, and it's how much it affected her game. And it really got me thinking, and it's kind of been like you had an experience yesterday that could have gone a totally, completely different way, but you chose to present it into a positive way, right? And so you had a different outcome that could have been. So today I really want to talk about how our energy, our the way we present ourselves, our you know body language, what we say, how we say it. Um, even just being in that positive mindset affects those around us because it's so contagious. Yeah. And, um, I just, I've been just completely getting bombarded with lots of people around me and having the same kind of issues and thoughts. And because I really work on, I don't, I, you can't have, be positive and happy all the time. That's just not the human life. But when I'm not, I really work on how do I want that perception to be to the people around me. And one thing that really always gets me is when you guys were younger and if I was really angry or if I was really in a bad spot and say dad was gone all day and he comes home and all of a sudden I'm just on him and I'm angry and I'm on you guys and and he would be like, gosh, I didn't even want to come home because I was in a good mood until I walked in the door. I remember that. Yep. And so now after, you know, you guys are all grown up and out of the house and now I'm really, you know, into the, I, one person can affect our whole life. One person can affect how your day goes if you don't learn to put the shields up. So when we think about energy and we think about sports, right? We think about how we project onto others, our teammates, um, our coaches, our adults, well, whoever we're around during that day, our parents even. So when we think about how we want to come across, do we want to push off how we're feeling onto everybody else? And if you're feeling, if you're in a good mood, then you're going to help out everyone else be in a good mood too. But if you're not in your brain, all your other stuff into your game, how is that going to affect your team? Well, it affects everybody. Absolutely. Whether you're a parent, athlete or coach, or you're just living your life day to day, it's going to affect the people around you. I mean, I know I've seen it firsthand with my athletes. One person, especially, especially if you have that more outgoing personality or like that leader, that leadership type of personality. Um, those people, if they have a bad attitude, it directly affects everyone else. I've seen it. Everybody shows up and they're all happy and excited and ready to go. And then the one person is there and has a terrible attitude. Instantly, everybody drops. I know. Everybody it drops. Crazy? It's crazy how we think, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm feeling the way I do. No one else feels the way I do. But in turn, we are all built of energy and we project our energy. And once we learn this, that we have to be careful. We have to be careful of what we want others around us to feel like. I don't want others to be angry and upset the way I am. So yeah. Either we have to take the steps and what are the steps to learn how do I control it? And um, I've written out some things for people to go over um, to just, just think first, you know? So, you know, maybe try when you wake up in the morning and just take five or 10 minutes and just feel what, what you're going through. Is it 
Is there something on your mind? Does something happen during the night? Maybe your phone went off or something happened before you went to bed um, that's going to carry over to your next day. How are you, How is that going to affect your day? Maybe you wake up groggy and with brain fog and you just don't want to get out of bed and you're not feeling it. Take that time, take that five or 10 minutes of your time first thing in the morning and understand what your body's going through, what your mind is going through, because that's going to set the motion for the rest of your day. Yeah, absolutely. If you're feeling um, any bad feelings on your own, do you want to feel those on your own or do you need to talk to somebody about it? You know, do you want to process on your own or do you want to feel, do you want someone else to help you about what? help you out if you are feeling bad it's okay to be it's okay to feel that way just understand it feel it and you know if you need if you want to have a good day it's your choice and you need to be able to sit for a minute and just process why and what's going on and be okay with it and sometimes we just have a funky day I do all the time um and how do you want to proceed with your day you want to be in a good mood today, then find out your why. And if you need to surround yourself with people that are going to put you in a better space, do so. Surround yourself with people that are going to make you feel good. And um, you just have to make a choice and understand it. So there's where it's all kind of the same, but it's a little bit just really mind control. I know when I was having a bad day when I was an active athlete, it was really, um, I learned, I learned that if I show, if I showed up or I hated it when my teammates would show up in a terrible mood and everybody else was in a great mood, excited. One person was in that bad mood and I hated how much it brought everybody else down. So I chose to change how I'm looking at this. So like if I had like if the shoe was on the other foot, right? If I woke up and I was in a bad mood, I would have the mindset of, okay, I can mentally prepare myself. I can um, be upset until I get there because once I get there, I'm going to be with my teammates, my friends, people that I love, and I'm not going to bring them down because I hate how it feels when others bring me down. And so I would always make sure to really be like cautious of that, that, okay, I can be in a bad mood right now, but once I'm with my teammates and my friends, I don't, I don't have to be like that because I already know that they're going to make me laugh or something and they're going to bring me out of it anyways, unless everybody else is already in a bad mood. <laughs> if everybody shows up in a bad then mood, just then <laughs> it's just done for you. You don't have anything else you can do. <laughs> But well, it's just, it, it's important to shield yourself, sorry, you know, against those people that have bad negative emotions. You have to learn to shield it. Yeah. I, I mean, and it's, I think it's a trust. I think it's a trust, honestly, to have with your teammates. Like, I'm trusting you to bring me out of this negative mindset. Um. And I think that's honestly really important to rely on your teammates like that. Um, if you have teammates, obviously, mm -hmm. um, because when you're by yourself, it's hard to bring yourself out of that negative mindset, out of that anger and everything. But mm -hmm. when you have people who have the same goal as you, or you're going to be working together um, you have to trust them, trust them to help you do what's right and um you know bring you up make you excited instead of angry about literally anything that could have happened mm -hmm. when I think about you know as the golfers that we're working with and I think about you know situations where they're playing one-on-one -on -one, you know if if they if they have a twosome that they're playing with especially in this tournament and all you have is the two of you and one's not engaged and, and negative, and one is like overly happy, 
And so then you're going to collide because this happy person doesn't want to conflict with the negative person, right? And so then all of a sudden the feelings are muted on her, on the positive one, because she doesn't know how to deal with it. And she doesn't want to cause conflict. And so we tend to, when someone's, when, you know, when we're positive and we're feeling good, when someone's feeling negative, we have the choice of either engaging in their negativity, which is so easy to do, or staying neutral and staying away from them. But then all of a sudden you have that internal thought of, they don't like me, or yeah. they, they're mad at me, or, you know, all those things that are second guessing yourself, which it has nothing to do with you. What they're going through is their own emotions, their own thoughts, but it's so easy to take on those thoughts because we feel for them, right? And so to learn that letting people have their own thoughts and being in their own space, letting them be, letting them be there, and then you control your own, you control your own emotions, and hopefully your positivity and your energy will reflect on them and they can easily get out of whatever they're doing, but it doesn't mean that you have to take it on. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's definitely situational too, to like the, they don't like me or something like that, because if you're playing with someone like in a golf, like it, let's say you're playing a round of golf and you don't even know this person, then you might, you're definitely not thinking, oh, they don't like me. I would be thinking maybe this is their in the zone kind of thing. Like maybe they have to block everybody out to stay focused. Maybe they're shy, maybe whatever, but that's still that negative energy still is going to like reflect on me and going to try to bring me down. For me, my first instinct is to like try to make them laugh. That's just me though. And I know that it's different for everybody is, I was always the kind of person, if it was just me and someone else, whether I was in a bad mood or they were in a bad mood, it would be like just kind of bonding over something. Maybe we both played a really crappy hole. And so we're going to, we're going to laugh it off together and say, you know, we're both playing like garbage because our balls are right next to each other, almost out of bounds. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so like, just find something like even the slightest thing. And it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be a big grand joke or laugh or something like that, but just like the littlest thing sometimes can bring someone up and bring, like, give you, give you a little bit of trust. Mm -hmm. Um, like I trust that she, you know, she's not going to like make me feel bad for being in a bad mood or something, or maybe she's going to make me feel good or he or whoever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One-on-one situations like that. I mean, that's, there's all kinds of different things that can happen. You know, you're going to have your own thoughts about the other person, the situation. There's all kinds of things that are going to happen when you're in a bigger um, team setting, like basketball, baseball, football, all those others. um, Then you come into many people that you have to deal with, right? Or even like, you know, parents, if you're going to work and you walk into the office and that one person is having a bad day, you know, you have the choice of saying, either engaging with them and saying, hey, you know, I see that you're, I I see you, what's, what's going on? You know, do you need to talk to somebody? And either you can choose to be that person they want to talk to, or, you know, just acknowledge them and say, hey, you know, if you need something, I I'm here for you. Um, sometimes people just need that acknowledgement that they're having a hard time, you know, in team situations, if, you know, coach says, Hey, I see you're having a hard time today. Can we talk about it after, after practice? You know, what can I do to help you so that we can, we can level it for now, but after practice, I'm totally there for you. And sometimes just extra acknowledgement lightens them to say somebody cares someone sees that I'm actually having a hard time. Yeah. And I think when it comes to coaches, it's extremely, extremely hard as a coach. Um, You can't have that bad attitude because it's only going to make your entire team, your coaching staff, whoever in a bad mood, or it's, it could ruin a game. 
-hmm. And um, I've experienced it both ways. I've had a coach who would just randomly walk out of practice and just leave us. And we were like, wait, what do we do now? Because he couldn't handle it. He would just get angry and just leave. And then all of us are like, oh no, oh no, what's happening? And that negative energy reflects on all of us. Mm -hmm. And um, it was this, it's the same thing. Like I've had a bad day too. And I've had to coach a game and I go in to coach a game and I'm trying to be, you know, I'm trying to be encouraging. I'm trying to make sure everybody's in the right spots, doing the right things, but then they go to do it and maybe they're not doing it successfully or they are, you know, not, you know, just not performing the way that you want them to do. And it just makes your negative energy get worse. And then, so then you just start yelling and getting angry with them and then they don't perform even more. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm not saying like, as a coach, you can't yell, you can yell, but in like, like I always say, uh, you know, listen to the tone or do not listen to the tone of what the coaches are saying, but listen to the actual like words and the concept of what they're talking about. As a coach, it's super, super important to make sure that you change that mindset. You know, you have games that day. Make sure that you're ready for it. Prepare yourself the night before because you're going to set up yourself and your team for failure if you're not in the right mindset for it. Right. The night before and even that morning, you know, if that morning, when you wake up in the morning, you have the choice to set your whole day. And, you know, if you just take that five or 10 minutes before you get out of bed or even getting out of bed and, you know, thinking about, okay, how do I want this day to go? How do I, how do I want to show up as a coach? How do I want to show up, you know, for our team? How do I, how do I want to show up for this day? You know, am I going to be a positive influence? Am I going to be a strong leader? Um, or am I just going to show up and just be yeah. there because I can't handle it? Yeah. Understand exactly. where, 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 how that's going to affect everybody. So I want to, I want to go over what it looks like when um, someone has negative energy. So I know negative energy is hand in hand with bo- bad body language, bad attitude. Um, they all go hand in hand with each other. And it's important that you make sure that you have all three of these things in check, your energy, your attitude, and your body language. No, I think, I think that's right. And your body language when you're in a negative mindset versus a positive light mindset is completely different. You know, when you're in a negative, your shoulders hunch, you, you know, have your sassy attitude, you, you know, there's, there's so many different things. Um, Ali, you've seen it firsthand with the young ones that you're working with now. Yeah, I mean, it can, it ranges depending on who it is. A lot of it is the head drop. The head drop, the, um, the huge sigh, the usually getting quiet because none of my girls are, are quiet, but they get quiet. Um, slamming balls, um, the smack, like super angry, the, the angry face. I mean, it ranges from anywhere crying, crying happens like a lot. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I'm, I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, girls that they do their thing. Um, I, and I don't think that all of these body language or actions are always bad. Um, I know that I used to, I did that clap all the time. Like if I missed some, a layup or I missed a shot or got beat or whatever, I would, you know, do the clap and I would get mad for a second, but then I would get back and I, but like, I would try not to, at least in college, I was better at this middle school and high school. I wasn't that good at it, but in college, at least I would be like, I would have the determination to just get back or to fix my mistake. I wouldn't let it completely hinder my playing. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's the biggest thing you can do. You can get mad, but use that anger in a, in a positive way. 
don't let it bring you down because if you get angry that you keep missing the same shot, you're not doing anything for yourself. Maybe you're not the shooter for today. Find a different role. I was actually talking to one of my girls about this the other day because she has to find a different role on our team um, because our team has evolved and we've added some, taken away some, and we're a different team now. And so I was telling her, every single role is important. You have to figure out how you're going to make it important. And your role might be different from today to tomorrow. But and that's why I respond to that. She actually thought, it, I mean, she responded well. And I think it also helped that I told her in basketball, um, when I was in high school, I played a one, two, three, four, and a five. I played all the spots that there was. I knew I could be thrown into any spot on the court and I could run that spot. And I got a lot of playing time because I could play anywhere. In college, I still played three spots, but in college, you usually don't play as many, but I played a three, four, and a five in college. And I got, when I was in, I could play any of the spots that they put me in because I knew every single spot on the court. I, I told her all of this as well. And she was like mind blown. And I said, okay. if you, she, I said, if you want to be a big role on this team, if you want to have a lot of playing time, you have to be able to play anywhere that we put you. And that's just, that's just how, especially team sports, that's how it works. Mm -hmm. If you want to be super successful, um, be able, be like able to do anything. Don't limit yourself because you, maybe you're not tall enough to play down low. I know some short, short, short women who play basketball and they are number one rebounders, right? They're rebounding over six, three, six, four, six, anything girls. And these girls are like five, two, and they're out rebounding six, some girls. That's insane. But that's mm -hmm. determination. And that's understanding that her role doesn't have to be standing out there for the shot or directing, you know, the passes, not being that point guard. It doesn't have to be like that. And that's all about your mindset and your attitude. If you want to be a great player, be a great player and play anything. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it all comes, it all comes down to everything that we've talked about all the time is mindset. That's what we teach. That's what we're, you know, that's what the workbook is about, is about learning what our minds control in our lives and how to control that, how to control what we're thinking and how it reflects on other people, how, you know, when we have a goal and when we have situations in our lives that we don't, we can't control, we can control them in a different way. You know, we can put it, get into a different role. We can find a different solution. Maybe one solution isn't the right one. So we have to find a different one, Yeah, but, but it all starts in the beginning. And that's what we're teaching is we're teaching the basics in the workbook and we're teaching the basics to our students to start to just recognize how much what our thoughts do in our world our thoughts create everything in our world no matter if it's family or if it's friends or if it's just our goals or whatever it is it starts right with our thoughts yeah yeah and it's recognizing just like when you're changing your shot or your swing or anything else in any sport, when you have to make adjustments, you have to recognize, you have to be able, when I'm shooting the ball, I recognize that I'm pushing with my thumb. I'm noticing it. That's the first step to anything is to recognize. Right. I'm recognizing that my negative feelings are reflected onto other people. You know, everyone was in a great mood when I walked in the door until I walked in with my shoulders down and my head down and, you know, not open to everyone around me because I've shut down because I'm not in a good mood and something's happened in my life that I'm just totally not there. And so everyone around me is now treating me differently because all of a sudden I'm not present or I'm yeah. reflecting negatively. Yeah. 
So think about when you're feeling down and you're in a bad mood or you're in brain funk or just not feeling in a positive way. Ask yourself, what am I thinking that's making me feel that way? When you're feeling that way, what actions are you taking? Are you angry with everyone around you? Are your shoulders down? Are you thinking negative thoughts about yourself? And then how is that, that when you're taking those actions, what result are you getting? Is everyone staying away from you? Are you all of a sudden creating this fight for your whole day because you are projecting this negative energy onto everyone around you? And then ask yourself, how, how would it feel better? How can I feel better? Yeah, let us know in the comments. We want to hear how you guys are all going through this. Um, so we can help you and you can also learn um, and we can learn. We're here learning with you, wanting to grow and keep getting better because our mindsets don't have to be negative. We don't have to have a negative mindset. We can be positive and we can get things done all the time. Um, so let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out our Instagram. We have lots of good things going on on our Instagram and our Facebook. You can also find us on TikTok. And we are now doing YouTube shorts. So on YouTube, go ahead and look at those. Um, there are some really good stuff in there. So we would love to see you all on there. Um, and give us any experiences that you guys want we, or that you have. We want to hear from you um, so we can all keep growing. If you'd like to um, start working on your thoughts more, check out our website, Let's Talk PMA. And get your workbook so that you can be the strongest mindset that you can be. Thank you all for joining and we will see you all next week.